Hello everybody, I'm Radhika Karg. I'm going to present my paper titled Understanding Tensions and Resilient Practices that Emerged from Technology Use in Asian Indian Families in the U.S. During COVID-19 Pandemic. Families in the U.S., like families in many countries in the world, experienced chronic uncertainty during COVID-19 and they adjusted their life routines while responding to threats from the pandemic. To combat the virus, local authorities imposed several restrictions in the spring of 2020 in most of the states in the U.S. As a result, families were urgently expected to adapt new ways of fulfilling their, for example, painting and professional responsibilities. This in turn meant that technology had a critical role to play as many important life activities were expected to be completed remotely. Technology is known to support people during the time of disruption. This line of work, however, has mostly focused on individual technological practices in regard to information communication technology such as social media platforms, blogs, and other online platforms. In this study, we aim to understand technological practices that made Asian Indian families with teens resilient in response to the disruption of COVID-19. The families came from different socioeconomic groups and the technologies ranged from traditional devices such as smartphones, tablets, laptops to more recent devices like smart speakers. Therefore, in this work, we answer what tensions between parents and teens emerged over technology use and how did parents and teens use technology to build resilience as they adapted new daily routines. To answer our research questions, we recruited 22 parent-teen pairs who belong to low and high SES socioeconomic status. Our study ran between March and June 2020. We began the data collection with interviewing each participant, after which the participants helped us collect experience sampling data for a period of 10 weeks. In the end of that period, each participant participated in exit interviews. More specifically, the interview started with questions about participants' daily routines, about challenges they were facing during COVID-19 pandemic, and about how they were working around those challenges. All of our participants discussed the role of technology in response to the latter question, which gave us the opportunity to ask them specific questions about their technology use in the co context of COVID-19. For example, their current ownership of smart devices, the benefits and challenges of having access to and using technology, their opinions about their own and other family members' use, and so on and so forth. The interviewer also asked parents about the restrictions they imposed on teens' use of technology. Based on the participants' responses, we also probed them to understand if and how and which aspects of their identity, especially those relating to their race, ethnicity, and of migration status, influenced their technology practices and the ways they were navigating the pandemic. During the logging period, we asked participants to individually log any experiences of technology use or co-use with parents or teens that led to either disagreement, improved interpersonal relationship, or enable them to adapt and function in the disruption caused by COVID-19. Team of three researchers open coded the interviews and sampling data by using constant comparative analysis. As code began to emerge, we used resilience framework and family resilience theory to construct theme associated with the family's resistance practices. According to Walsh's family resilience framework, various key processes that can empower a family to build resilience are those that involve family's belief system, organizational patterns, and communication and problem solving. According to Patterson, important processes for family resilience defining clear family rules, obtaining support from the community, engaging in active coping efforts, developing collaborative relationships with professionals, and maintaining daily routines and rituals. One of the key findings of our work is that parents had to introduce several changes that led to tension, specifically because it impacted the way teens could use technology. Overall, all of the low SES families and three of the high SES families had to figure out how to access technology as due to COVID-19, most of the family members had to use technology almost at the same time for completing essential online tasks. Most low SES and few high SES families created a daily internet access schedule and thought it was critical for everybody in the family to follow it due to having insufficient bandwidth. It did not sit well with the teens. For example, a teen noted, I get why my parents are putting all of us on a schedule for using internet, but what I don't like is asking them each time before I want to quickly check on something. The next change which was more prevalent in low SES families was the meaning of physical spaces changed. For example, bedrooms were made offices, 
or children play areas were converted into bedrooms or working spaces. This also changed the way teens engaged with technology. For example, they were no longer allowed to close their rooms and privately access technology during the day because mothers might be sitting next to them and working as well. A teen noted, my mom has asked me to no longer close the door if I'm using any device in my bedroom or in my play comes study room. She's like, with you now being allowed to be on your laptop and tablet for so much more time, you can easily get carried away, so I want your door open. She needs to ask me when she makes such changes that impacts my private spaces. Teens were uncomfortable with any change that specifically impacted the technology used in private spaces and are privately, especially when they were not involved in the decision making or were given the opportunity to share their situational needs. Both parents and teens reported that parents had to change the way they divided their responsibilities or collaborated with each other in regard to technology mediation of teens. Such a change happened when the parent who had been responsible was consumed with additional responsibilities, for example, concerning the education of younger children or job-related job responsibilities. Also, while the overall screen time limits were considerably reduced for teenagers, new activities for context-specific rules had to be introduced by parents. A teen noted, it's difficult to understand who is in charge and when. I see they are having a hard time, but instead of realizing they are the ones causing the confusion, they feel I just want to be on the phone all the time. Often parents also attributed their teen's behavior to a more individualistic than a collectivistic mind, as opposed to their own relatively more collectivist thinking. Due to the teen's bicultural identity and to the level of independence teens are granted in the US, which the parents had never been permitted when they lived in India. Both parents and teens claimed that the other's behavior were intentional and grounded in personal choices, whether their own actions were an attempt to navigate the changes caused by COVID-19. For example, teens thought that having to adjust their technology use amongst all other changes in their lives was confusing and challenging. In contrast, they thought that parents observed a double standard because they did not heed the restrictions themselves and did not consult their children when deciding on them. Similarly, parents thought that Teens were intentionally undermining their instructions and policies while they themselves were forced to implement changes to cope with the disruption. This is reminiscent of the correspondence bias. Despite the tensions around technology use, parents and teens due to instrumental role of technology adopted new practices that became part of their new normal and contributed to family resilience. While technology was an integral part of their life before the pandemic, by adopting new applications or new ways of using familiar technologies in their daily repertoire, our participants were able to extend their capabilities and be resilient despite the restrictions imposed on them in the physical world. On the left side of the image, you see various practices that our families adopted, and on the right side, you see the corresponding processes as listed in Walsh's framework or Peterson's theory of family resilience. I next go over two of the resilient practices that we observed in our study. Family resilience is not to be fostered by open emotional expression and the shared construction of family beliefs about reality and the future, that is meaning making. While high SES parents are known to engage often in cultivating their children's opinion and observations, most low SES parents do not focus on these skills. However, during the period of disruption, technology enabled the Asian Indian parents participants across SESs to engage in meaning making and open emotional expression with their children on an ongoing basis and interweave it with essential ongoing activities. And it helped them to converse at a frequency that was otherwise not possible due to conflicting schedules of family members. Prior research has shown that while family relationships and cohesiveness are important in Asian Indian families, and it was in fact reflected in our data, for example, through participants' concerns about the well-being of extended family members, most teens and parents did not discuss issues such as dating and marriage before because of the parents' disapproval of mainstream American attitudes. However, sharing feelings and emotions regularly with the help of technology during the pandemic led families even to discuss topics that were avoided earlier due to generational difference in cultural values. Therefore, in our view, this is an important affordance of technology that helped our participants cope with disruptions. This helped parents to continually provide children with security and continuity in their individual and shared targets, and the children could experience a climate of tolerance for discussing sensitive topics, differences, and a wide range of feelings. 
Second, instead of having to wait for help from public or private organizations such as libraries, local employment centers, technology employed the participants with the affordance of mobilizing virtual groups within their networks of strong and weak ties to organize less tangible resources that were useful for individuals or the entire family unit, such as information-based resources, specific skill-based knowledge. For example, despite the occasional presence of hostility in the U.S. towards immigrants, our study found that teens primarily in Asian and in high SAS families organized inter-ethnic groups, often with the involvement of parents, to continue their extracurricular activities in some form. The low SES Asian parents also acknowledged having connections with local U.S. residents. However, they formed groups only with other immigrants due to the fear of being judged by others and due to the lack of experience of living as immigrants. These groups helped them to gain access to essential information and share resources also, for example, job-based opportunities, groceries. This sort of creative resourcefulness is known to make families resilient by opening up new possibilities for them to overcome adversity. Overall, technology enabled parents and teens to fulfill many of their individual level goals such as the ability to share feelings, receive support in caregiving, and family level goals such as shared understanding of crisis, openly communicate feelings and concerns, access to intangible resources and essential information, and maintain social connections. While the paper offers several implications in the interest of time, I present here one of the design recommendations. The circle of trust is a concept that has its root in research on healthy relationship formation for children with autism and has been recommended to parents for determining whether they can see teens' entire communication with someone or other flagged conversation. Based on the resilient practices that parents and teens develop with the support of technology, we see this concept as being more broadly useful as families can form different circles of trust with groups of people using different metrics such as strength of ties, reliability of someone's opinion. This can support families in collaborating with their social circles to organize tangible and intangible resources. We envision application that matches users according to their desired resources and circles of trust. In this case, circles of trust can be defined based on strength of ties. For example, if somebody is interested to learn a skill, an intangible resource, with anyone in a specific circle of trust, let's say a strong tie, weak tie, or public circle, the application can automatically connect them to others who share or can help them with their interest. Thank you so much, and I would also like to take this opportunity to thank my research team, Shreya Satapopan and Christopher Moreno, for helping with several stages of this work.